Is that better for sound? Can you hear me now? Is that better? Can I get a thumbs up for audio, hopefully? Can you, you guys hear me now? All right, uh-oh. Oh man, what's happening? Do you guys hear that? Now you can hear, do you hear that? What is that? Oh no! Hello again, my friends. I'm back to talk to you now that you can hear. I wanted to see if you're all ready for a good night. Maybe a scream or two? Who's that behind you? Is it a friend? Is it a foe? Or is it just some guy trying to make a YouTube video? <laughs> Woo! All right. So I hope you guys are in for a fun and exciting evening. And I hope you're not already creeped out because I'm a little creeped out. But I got my boy, FK, Freddy K, Mr. Kruger himself, who's sitting in. Freddie, anything, uh, anything you want to say? No? Oh, he's so creepy. He's so creepy, my Freddy. Anyways, hello and welcome, everyone. So glad to have you here. Coach, Carla, MJ, Snoopy, AAU, John B, Coaster Mom, welcome, everybody. This is going to be epic. And the reason why it's going to be epic, and I know I start every show by saying, this is going to be huge. This is going to be great. Um, biggest, hardest show ever. But this one, <laughs> man, I can't even tell you. I started going down the rabbit hole here, and things kind of snowballed really, really quick. Uh, so there's lots to talk about. I want to jump right in. I want to have this as interactive as possible. So I can't wait to hear your stories. And there's only one place, you know, we can really start. And if you haven't guessed it already, tonight, we're talking horror. We're talking the frights, the fun, the scary, the gory. We're talking about it all. So I do want to say right off the bat, there might be some sensitive material, some sensitive images shown. Um, no gore, no blood and guts, but anyone who is um, uh, subject to night terrors, um, I don't want to be a trigger. Uh, so if, if you can't watch, I appreciate you coming in, hitting the like button and, and you know, going on. But I hope you'll all stay because this is going to be a lot of fun. Of course, if you're watching for the very first time to the channel, if you found us or you're watching the replay, Please do hit the thumbs up, hit the like button, uh, hit the subscription button over here somewhere, and the notification bell right beside it, because we are growing so fast and furious, and we love to have you all along for the ride. Now, there is so much to talk about. As you can see from these collages, there's some really big name people. There's some people that you may have never heard of before. <clears throat> I'm hoping to introduce some of you to new and exciting things to watch. And where I want to get started today, I want to take it back to what got me into horror and really where it all started for me. And these are really the core group of films <clears throat> that really opened my eyes to say, oh my God, this is insane. I love this. So, I mean, there's so much more I'm going to talk about and maybe I'll, let me pull up my, my list here because you know, going down, I didn't want to pull up images for everything, but I can't do a horror show without giving a big, big shout out. And he's not around anymore, so he's definitely not watching, but a very big shout out to Alfred Hitchcock. Um, because if it wasn't for Alfred Hitchcock, uh, this genre would have never taken off like it has with, you know, the birds and probably the number one rated um horror movie of all time, Psycho. And Psycho is actually number one on Rotten Tomatoes. So if you haven't seen the original Psycho, definitely a classic worth watching. 
Uh, the remake was okay, but it wasn't the same. Hitchcock brought so much to the genre and so much creativity and a way of frightening people that they hadn't really experienced before. <clears throat> so definitely wanted to start off the show talking about where everything started and giving props to the man, Alfred Hitchcock. Somebody else that we're going to talk a lot about his films today who really took the horror genre to the next level is Stephen King. And I know Stephen King was an author and his books were amazing. Um, Pet Cemetery, Tommy Knockers, Misery, like the man could write. And a lot of those books turn into really terrifying movies. So definitely, again, want to give a shout out to Stephen King. Because without Stephen King, without Alfred Hitchcock, this genre does not grow to the point it is today. Now, one of the other kind of areas that I didn't put pictures up, but one of the areas we definitely need to call out when we talk about horror is going back to the classic monster movies. You know, whether it was King Kong, Dracula, Frankenstein, the Wolfman, the Creature from the Blue Lagoon, um, even towards the fly. Uh, such classics in that old school genre. <clears throat> and unfortunately today, people watch them and they laugh at them, but those were absolutely terrified. AAU says, host, I used to drive by his house in Banger ME all the time. That's wicked. Very, very cool. Um, so definitely shout out to those guys in the old monster movies. They're still fun to watch if you go back and watch Wolfman and Dracula and all that. Very, very cool. Of course, um, those monster movies remade over and over and over again. Um, of course, The Mummy, you know, with Brendan Fraser, even though it became more of an action movie. Um, great, great movie. But for me, this is where it all started with these core films on the screen here. You know, Firestarter. And can anybody guess who the star of Firestarter, where is it? I can't really point to it over here. The star of Firestarter was, and by that face, you should definitely be able to guess. And I'll give you a hint. She was also the star of E.T. So imagine going from E.T. <laughs> to Firestarter. And you got it, MJ. Drew Barrymore, a very cute Drew Barrymore, who terrified the crap out of me when I was a kid. I don't remember the whole story between behind Firestarter because I was so afraid. But this girl who could just start fires and they were trying to get her. And it, man, this movie kept me up at night for sure. You know, right next to it, Poltergeist. Poltergeist was one of the classics. I don't think I've sat through the entire movie of Poltergeist, but the whole thing of your, you know, the being sucked into the TV. Um, you know, creeped me out. And, and it was so hard to watch because I was a big TV guy. There was a movie that was remade, and we'll talk about it a little bit later, called The Ring, that kind of, I think, took um, whoops, took the basis of Poltergeist and expanded it and brought it into the new age. You know, The Exorcist. The Exorcist was such a classic. This was a movie that, man, scared the pants off of everybody. The people who made the movie had nightmares. Uh, right after making it because it was it was so intense and back then there was not like nothing really of its kind um you know when they re-released this into the theater um gosh it was in the mid 90s i want to say mid to late 90s and they remade the exorcist we went to a late late night showing it might have been like 10 30 showing and people were laughing they were watching the movie and laughing and to me i thought that was so disrespectful such a classic classic movie the Exorcist, that frightened me and hear people laughing. I get it. It's a different time. But, you know, show some respect. MJ says, I've seen bits and pieces of Poltergeist, and it was a little bit much for my young... Absolutely. It really, <clears throat> really irked me. Another one that got me that I didn't watch the whole thing was Critters. I don't know if you guys remember Critters, but there was one scene. These are these little critters. It's the only way to explain them. That would run around and they would like chew holes through you. And uh, there was the one scene where the guy's sitting on the toilet and the critter kind of comes up through the toilet. And well, you can imagine what happened next. Um, that was like the first thing. I think my dad was watching this and I happened to be like peeking through the stairs. You know, we used to have the, the stairs that had the, you know, no backs. So you could see right through between the steps. And I remember watching and seeing that scene and I 
took off to my room. I was I was mortified. Um, AAU, I've seen all four critters. Oh man, that's awesome. That's wicked. Uh, Snoopy, my neighbor has what I call a poltergeist tree. Oh no, oh no, Snoopy, that's got to be horrifying to sit and, and see across the way. Um, <clears throat> one of the other movies, and we talk about poltergeist and how that was being scary. I didn't put it up here because I don't classify it as a horror movie. But one of the movies that absolutely terrified me, and the blue and the poltergeist reminds me of it, was The Burbs with Tom Hanks. Do you guys remember The Burbs? Um, this movie where, you know, he had the creepy neighbors that were like burying bodies and doing stuff. That movie as a kid absolutely terrified me. So I, I wanted to for sure give shout out to The Burbs. <clears throat> Uh, up here, one of the coolest movies, which I loved, uh, right up here, Puppet Master. I don't know if you guys have seen Puppet Master. It was a little bit low-key. Uh, I actually have over here, show and tell uh, section of today's show, Puppet Master 5, four ninety nine, bought from, from Blockbuster Video. If you remember Blockbuster Video. And kids, if you're watching this for the first time, you shouldn't be because you have to be 18 or you should be 18. But this is a VHS tape. <laughs> so this was, there it is, Puppet Master 5. Loved Puppet Master. Such a cool, cool concept of these puppets that came to life. And one of my favorites of all time of the puppets, I actually went and got. I don't remember his name. Post, what the heck is that thing? Oh, Puppet Master, AAU, Puppet Master was amazing. There's this puppeteer who had these little puppets and they would come to life and they'd get you and they'd hack you and hook you and do all the bad things to you. But this was my favorite guy. He was awesome. He was so cool. He's got the, the little hook and the knife for hands. This guy was really, really cool. Uh, but yeah, Puppet Master, let me reach down. Uh, I can't read. Uh, it's too, I turned the lights off in here. It's too, too dark to see away from the ring light. But these guys were so cool. They were just puppets that came to life. Because in the fifth chapter, the puppets wage their most desperate battle yet. Young Puppet Master Rick, friend and protector of these feisty half pints, has his hands full keeping the mischievous gang in line. But he's certainly no match for Totem, a vicious and truly evil creature from another dimension who is hell-bent on destroying every last puppet. Then there's the menacing Dr. Jennings, who's intent on dismantling the puppets at all costs to learn their secret of life. Caught between these two dark forces, the canny puppets carry out a battle plan unlike anything they'd ever seen in the ultimate effort to save each other and Rick, the last puppet master. So cool. Definitely worth, definitely worth checking out, for sure. Oh, VHS. He was talking about VHS. Yeah, VHS. You know, little cassettes before DVDs. <laughs> oh, so also along with Puppet Master in the top corner, Creep Show. Creep Show. This is another one I definitely snuck down and kind of peeked through the stairs and watched. Creep Show was absolutely terrifying. This was one um, where it's made up of a bunch of short films, and I think there was actually a there was Creep Show one and Creep Show two. I think it's in Creepshow 1 was a short called The Moss Man. And it was a Stephen King one where there was like a piece of a meteor that fell and it was glowing green and a guy went up and picked it up and he started growing mossy and he just turned into a big pile of moss. It was so scary. But what a, what a great, great show. I don't like the marionettes in general, says MJ. Yeah, marionettes can be re really creepy. They're really cool and really complex to, to use, but really creepy. So just imagine if this little guy was Pinocchio, right? If they ever made a Pinocchio horror movie where Pinocchio came to life and started killing people. And every time he'd kill someone, his nose would grow. <laughs> um, the last one on the screen, kind of in the bottom corner over here, Maximum Overdrive. Um, if you have not seen Maximum Overdrive, I highly recommend it. Starring Emilio Estevez. And this really, the whole soundtrack to Maximum Overdrive is ACDC. So even if you don't like the movie, the soundtrack is killer. No pun intended. See what I did there? Um, it is such a good soundtrack. And what Maximum Overdrive is all about 
is all the machines come to life, right? The trucks come to life. Um, there's a scene at a baseball game where a pop machine comes to life and it starts shooting pop cans at people. Uh, hey, Tiffany, welcome in. Highly recommend Maximum Overdrive. Um, really a, a cool concept in a great, great movie for sure. Let's kind of go to our, our next set, moving right along into a little bit of the animals section. So I'm going to start at the bottom over here. Tales from the Dark Side. Tales from the Dark Side, I actually got on Laserdisc because uh, I loved it so much. Again, it's another movie that is made up of um, short stories and some really, really cool, crazy short stories. Um, one of a, a mummy who is coming looking for his insides to put himself back together. Uh, they're not one of a gargoyle on top of a building, those stone gargoyles that comes to life. Tales from the Dark Side was so cool. Tales from the Crypt, the Crypt Keeper. Crypt Keeper, probably one of the first cool horror characters I ever became to know. And he had that crazy laugh, almost like Salacious Crumb from, from Star Wars, right? Tales from the Crypt was so amazing. Hey, CeeLo, good evening, my friend. Thanks for coming in. Um, wasn't Blondie in that one or was she in Tales from the Crypt? Uh, I don't remember. But Tales from the Crypt was cool because every episode he would tell you know, a new story. And there was a Tales from the Crypt movie. Actually, I think there was a few movies. Um, they weren't great, but they were just fun. And he was such a cool character. Uh, so I really, really liked that. Of course, up here, we have Jaws, which Jaws is definitely, you know, it's, it's oh gosh, it's hard to put it in the horror category for me, but it scared the pants off me when I was a kid. So it does go in there. And it's pretty amazing that, you know, when you think about Jaws, one of the things that made it so popular was the viewpoint of the shark, because the mechanical shark they had didn't work. <laughs> so they had to improvise and use the camera through the water. And I think that made it way more terrifying than, uh, you know, if they would have had the shark the full time. Now, Jaws was great. Jaws 2 was OK. Jaws 3 in 3D. Eh, it was okay, but, you know, I, I still kind of enjoyed it. Jaws 4, I don't remember at all. Um, Jaws 5, I hated. Jaws 5 was the wife seeking revenge, and I think Jaws 5 was the one at the end, the shark jumps out of the water, and she rams it with the point of the boat to take him out. I, I did not like that. But the original Jaws, by far, was the best. It was awesome. Um, that line at the end when he gets the gas tank in the mouth and he's sitting there on the boat as it's sinking. Oh, such a great, great movie. And of course, Richard Dreyfuss, um, you know, so such a great actor uh, in that movie. And of course, in the top corner over here, one of my favorite movies of all time uh, starring Kevin Bacon is Tremors. Uh, so I actually have the sequel here also on one of those devices called VHS. Also from Blockbuster. Um, I don't remember buying this one, but I guess I did. But yeah, this Tremors 2 was awesome. Um, as well, what's his name? From, uh, from uh, shoot, from Family Ties. Not Family Ties, Growing Pains. The father, what's his name? Uh, does it say the actor's name on here? No, I can't read it. It's too dark. But Tremors was such an awesome, awesome movie. Really loved it. The first one was the best by far. Kevin Bacon was so good. Um, really enjoyed Tremors. If you haven't watched it, this is a good rainy day. It's not overly scary. Uh, it's just a fun movie. Uh, not not Alan Thick. It was um, so Alan Thick was shoot. I'm mixing them up. Alan Thick was Growing Pains. So it was Family Ties. Um, then it was it was Family Ties. It wasn't Alan Thick. It was the other guy. Here is, is this picture. He's this guy here. If I hold it close enough, uh, no, I can't see. This guy over here with the shotgun. He was he was the other the other dad. Really really cool. Shh, don't say that too loud. <laughs> um, yeah, AAU, hey, you're right. Jaws the ride. I got to ride Jaws actually before they removed it. The Jaws ride was phenomenal. I did as well when I was little. Um, had probably one of the best universal trips ever. Um, 
I have a lot of footage from that trip on VHS, actually, uh, at my parents. I'm going to see if I can kind of digitalize that and maybe put some of it on, on the channel. Because, yeah, Jaws the Ride was on there. Um, Twister, Back to the Future, Earthquake, the original King Kong. We went on all those, and I have all the videos, so I definitely want to put it up. Michael Gross, there we go. Tiffany for the win. Michael Gross was Family Ties dad. Thank you. Family Ties dad, Michael Gross. He was in Tremors as this gun-toting, happy son of a gun. Uh, so definitely want to check that out. Now, when we talk a little bit with time, just want to keep an eye on the time because I can get carried away, as we all know. When we talk about villains, there were some unbelievable villains in the horror world. Hey, Brian Kay, welcome in. And no worries, never need to apologize, my friend. <clears throat> so The Shining, we talk about The Shining, you know, probably one of the, the OG villains, right? Crazy, crazy Jack. Um, such a, a good movie. Uh, Kubrick was, was a genius. Um, those twin girls, uh, you know, we see references to The Shining everywhere. Um, the most recent example, a few years back, if you remember the movie Ready Player One, Ready Player One actually had a lot of horror movie references in it, um, but they did a whole part of the movie based on, on The Shining, which was really, really, really cool. Um, the one over here, Pinhead from Hellraiser. I never actually watched Hellraiser, but I give Pinhead props because it's just a freaking cool character, man. Like this guy with all the pins, like what a crazy, crazy character. So I don't know if anybody has watched Hellraiser, if you want to comment on if it was good or bad, if you'd recommend it or not. Um, but definitely one that is, uh, you know, jury still out on for me. Uh, Tiffany says, funny story. I saw Hellraiser with my mom. Really? How did that go over <laughs> at the movies? How did that go over, Tiffany? Did you, was it good? Like, do you guys enjoy it? That's that's pretty awesome. I, I couldn't imagine going with uh, with my folks to see uh, a horror movie. Triton says he loved Hellraiser. All right. That's a good enough recommendation. She picked it, Tiffany says. All right. That's a pretty cool mom. <laughs> that's awesome. Um, in the very top corner up here, you'll recognize this guy, Leatherface, from the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Um, now this movie, again, I didn't see it when it really came out and had its big thing. I saw it years later. I was always really afraid to see it. For me, and I've, I've kind of told the story before, I do not like jump out horror. Uh, like if somebody was to pop out from behind this corner and say boo, I would have hit the, hit the ceiling. Tiffany said she didn't like all the blood, but she was a moviegoer. She just went once a week. Oh, that's awesome. So my kids actually, Noah, little sweet Noah, loves to kind of hide in my closet, behind my bed, behind a door, in the laundry room, anywhere. And as soon as you walk by, he will jump out and scream. And he scares the pants off of us all the time. Now, when we do it back to him, he cries and says we're the worst people ever. Uh, but he thinks it's funny as hell when he scares us. So we always have to be on our toes. But I hate jump out scare. So for me, I was terrified of Ch Texas Chainsaw Massacre. When I finally saw it, I was a little disappointed. I was expecting some more action. And I think the remake uh, was definitely more on the, along the action lines. But when you sit down and you think and you remember that Texas Chainsaw Massacre was, you know, based or loosely based on, on a true story, right? That's freaking crazy, right? That is absolutely scary as can be when you watch that movie and think that somewhere there were stories told that this something similar may have happened. That really creeped me out <laughs> more than the movie itself. I actually haven't gone back and watched any of the other uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacres just for that point. Um, you know, I do want to give uh, props as well to Blair Witch. Um, I didn't put a picture of Blair Witch, but the Blair Witch Project <clears throat> was a one-of-its-kind movie. You know, handheld, shot, running through the bushes, through the forest. Often, you know, I say it all the time when I'm, you know, picking up, if I'm on a, a Zoom call and I have to move somewhere, or if I'm FaceTiming and walking around, we always say, hey, sorry for the Blair Witch. 
um, experience. But Blair Witch, kind of up there with Texas Chainsaw Massacre, gave me that same same type of feel. Um, and at the end, especially because Blair Witch Project made you feel like it was a true story. And that really bothered me. I, I don't mind if it's something so far-fetched that you know it, it's false. But when they blur that line of reality to horror to fiction, science fiction, all that stuff and mix it all up, it's just, it's a complete, I'm going to say it, it's a complete mind mess. I was, I was going to swear, but I, I held myself back. Ah. It just, it messes with your mind. Um, MJ says, Blair Witch was cheesy for me. Really? Oh, that's, hey, you win some, you lose some, right? Um, you know, when we go down here to the bottom, this guy over here, Candyman, uh, this was one I couldn't watch. Uh, I know others have loved it. I know some have hated it. He's such a creepy villain. And actually just talking about it makes me want to look over my shoulder. Um, but what a crazy, crazy, scary movie. And to me, this almost took like the idea of Beetlejuice, which, you know, not a scary movie, maybe to little kids, but a fun movie, right? Tim Burton, Michael Keaton. And took it to a whole another level with the idea of saying the name in, in the mirror and, and all of that. Really creeped creep me out so i'm not going to talk about too much about that one because it gives me the heebie-jeebies but this guy up here ash ash in the evil dead was amazing ash was so cool again i was a real late bloomer to evil dead um and sam raimi such a genius you know some people will say uh it's not a horror movie it's just a, a fun movie, and it is scary. It is scary for sure. Hey, you host, you need to look in the mirror and say his name. Yeah, I'll, I will pass on that for sure, Triton. <laughs> but Evil Dead, um, Sam Raimi and Bruce Campbell came up with such classic dialogue. And the story behind Evil Dead, how the first one, they had like no money, and they shot it guerrilla style, and they made it into this like cult classic. And then they did Evil Dead 2, which essentially was a remake of the first one, uh, but just with a lot more money behind it. And then, of course, you had Army of Darkness, which is one of my favorites. Such a cool movie. Um, and then there was the series Ash vs. the Evil Dead, which I've not yet seen. I really, really do want to uh, want to see that. But the cool thing with Evil Dead is they came up with so many one-liners and so many cool quotes. And Bruce Campbell just had that deep voice that made everything sound cool. So I have kind of, um, according to ScreenRant.com, here are the kind of the top 15 catchphrases from Evil Dead. And some of these, some of these are eh, but uh, they're pretty cool. Uh, so here we go, number 15. Someone's in my fruit cellar. Someone with a fresh soul. <laughs> Get it? Fresh fruit boo. Uh, there's the who's laughing now when he's when he's fighting his hand. Uh, there's uh, when he has to read from the book in, in order to reverse the spell. And he mumbles along uh, the words and all hell breaks loose. And he's like, look, maybe I didn't say every tiny syllable. No, but basically I said them. Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, so classic. Uh, MJ, I knew of Bruce Campbell from Xena before Ash. Interesting. Yeah, Bruce Campbell is amazing. Another great one, number 12. Good, bad, I'm the guy with the gun. I love that. It kind of reminds me of Indiana Jones when the guy pulls out the sword and he's doing all the whips and he's trying to scare Indy and he just pulls out the gun. And but I love that. Good, bad, I'm the guy with the gun. Uh, I'll skip down a couple... Hit yeah, number nine, swallow this. Love that. Uh, number seven was classic from the Army of Darkness. This is my boom stick in regarding to his shotgun. So awesome. Hey, Triple, welcome in. Uh, one of the classics of all time. Yo, she bitch, let's go. <laughs> I love that. So classic. Uh, well, hello, Mr. Fancy Pants. Another great line. He had the best. Okay, there we go. Triple. Oh, Hellraiser. Love that movie. Another glowing review for Hellraiser. Awesome. Another great Ash quote. 
Give me some sugar, baby. Love it. And then, of course, at the very end, hail to the king, baby. And groovy. And he actually did use the line, I'm here for two reasons, to kick ass and chew bubblegum. And I'm all out of bubblegum. <laughs> it was so good. If you haven't seen uh, Evil Dead, Evil Dead 2, or Army of Darkness, I highly, highly recommend them. So I want to take a break from the scary stuff because I'm about to get into the big stuff, um, which I know a lot of us want to talk about. But there are some other movies I wanted to, to just give some shout outs to that I quite enjoyed. So The Mist with Thomas Jane. I don't know if you've seen The Mist where they're stuck in the grocery store because there's all or in the uh, yeah grocery store because in The Mist, there were all the creatures and the fog. And uh, if you went out, they'd kill you or whatever. Um, such a cool movie. And it was a really sad movie in the end, right? He takes his family and his kid, and they're in the Jeep, and they're trying to get out of the mist, and they figure um, they couldn't get out. So in order to be, in order to die together, they were going to kill each other, and that way they would die by their own hand and not by the creatures. And they all die, and at the end, he shoots. Uh, it was similar to the fog, absolutely. And at the end, he shoots the boy. And then, of course, as soon as the boy dies, the mist and the fog, it clears and the army's there and everyone saves the day. And he just like wiped out his whole family. Such a, a such a, a an emotional ending to a pretty, pretty great film. I also have to give shout out to George A. Romero. We talked about Hitchcock earlier. We talked about Stephen King. But George Romero in Land of the Dead, Day of the Dead, Dawn of the Dead, Everything of the Dead. So brilliant. So cool. I actually, I did have the honor of meeting him at a Comic-Con here in Toronto many, many moons ago. Such a cool guy. So brilliant. They actually filmed, um, which one was, I think it was the remake Dawn of the Dead. If that was the one that took place in the shopping mall, that was actually done at a mall by my house. Um, and it was funny because we walked past it when I used to walk to high school. We'd walk past the mall and there was a little path that would go down through a little tunnel. And then you come up at the other side and they used that tunnel and that path in the movie. Uh, so it was really, really cool. And yeah, Brian K, that is exactly where I was going, my friend. Check is in the mail for that segue. Um, there are some spoof horror movies that are definitely worth mentioning. Shaun of the Dead being up there for sure. Shaun of the Dead, I love those guys. They did Hot Fuzz, you know, all those classic movies. Um, Shaun of the Dead was so much fun. It was such a great movie and it was really lighthearted zombie movie. Actually, I want to go watch that again because it was so much fun. So big props to, to Shaun of the Dead. Uh, as well, Zombieland. Uh, Zombieland, not scary. Uh, a little gruesome. Woody Harrelson and, uh, uh, oh my God, Lex Luthor, what's his name? Also in the Facebook movie. Uh, why can't I think of his name? Um, you know who I'm talking about though. He was in there. Uh, I think, uh, uh, Emily Stone, I think was in there. It was a big cast at Zombieland and Zombieland 2. Really, really, really fun movie. So definitely check those ones out. Um, scary movie. Actually, I've been watching it recently. They've been on TV all the time because of Halloween on the movie channels. Scary movie was so funny. Anna Faris, early Anna Faris. Um, really enjoyed those, uh, some of the Waynes brothers in there as well. Uh, all the scary movies were, were just classic, great, great spoof, spoof movies. Um, but one of my favorites of all time is Ernest Scared Stupid. I don't know. I hope you guys remember Ernest, you know, Ernest Saves Christmas, Ernest Goes to School, classic, classic movies, but Ernest Scared Stupid was such a fun twist on a scary Halloween movie. Um, so definitely, if you want to have some good laughs, it is definitely okay for kids. Uh, Ernest Scared Stupid was classic. Hey, good evening, Sean. Welcome in. Um, outside of those, the other movie, before we get into the big ones that I really wanted to talk about, um, well, there's a few actually, 28 Days Later. 28 Days Later, not overly retro, but 28 Days Later was a crazy end of the world type movie. Um, quite enjoyed it. Really didn't know what to expect from it. I, I didn't see it in the theater. I saw it at home one day when I was sick from work. 
but really a cool, cool movie. As well, if you want to talk cheesy, classic kind of B-horror movies, Leprechaun. Um, Leprechaun was hysterical. I think there's about, you know, Leprechaun 25. It goes up to there are a million Leprechaun movies, but just so much fun. Um, but those ones are pretty, pretty gruesome as well, if I remember. Um, the Ring, we kind of mentioned The Ring earlier. Uh, Tiffany says, love it, not what I was expecting. Uh, MJ, was that the one where they were all at the mall? Yeah, so that mall, uh, MJ, that mall was around the corner from my house. I spent many, many hours in that mall. And what they were doing, <clears throat> the mall, it was, it was weird. There was kind of like the main building of the mall, and the back half was only like the upper floor. And that back half, they were blowing up. They were demolishing it to build townhouses. So before they did that, they um, they created, you know, they filled all the shops and they filmed the movie and they completely destroyed it. Uh, but it was so cool. Um, so, yeah, The Ring, we kind of mentioned earlier when we were talking about Poltergeist. The Ring really took on a life of its own um, and a big, big following. Definitely kind of was a, a new kind of terrifying uh, movie at its time. Same with Saw in It. You know, It, of course, It is It. I don't need to talk much more about It. That was terrifying. Saw, I never got into the Saw movies, but definitely worth mentioning for, for what they brought. Um, one of the big ones I haven't mentioned at all tonight, because I don't consider it a, a horror movie. I consider it more of an action movie. Um, but Alien, for that regard, Alien and Predator together. Um, you know, a lot of people consider the Aliens uh, horror movies. So cool. Again, real brilliant original concept. And the fact that they brought Alien and Predator and put them together and, and did a whole series was was something something else. Uh, let's just see. Uh, did I make everything on my list? Uh, Down with the Dead, Ramiro, 20 Days Later. We talked about the old monster movies, The Fly. Oh, Carrie. I forgot about Carrie. Carrie, classic with the blood and everything. Carrie, another creepy, creepy movie. Definitely, definitely cool. All right, those are all on my list. Now let's get to the good stuff. We really want to talk about the big guns, right? And the reason why a lot of us love horror movies. And as much as we love these little guys from Puppet Master, and Sean, you've probably seen Puppet Master. Tell me, tell me you've seen Puppet Master because these guys are awesome. Uh, but that's not why we're here. We're not there to see Puppet Master and Poltergeist and a lot of those old movies. What we are here for is ba -ba -ba -ba, the big guns of horror movies. These are the top four. And, and now this is my opinion, of course. You guys may have your own opinions. But to me, these are the top four that dominated the genre through the 80s and into the 90s. And we start over here with this guy. Chucky, Child's Play. This was such an amazing movie. There is a new show actually in here, uh, in here, in Canada, or at least in Ontario. It's on Showcase. I think it's on Sci Fi in the States. I'm not sure. I've only watched the first two episodes. The show is actually just called Chucky, and it's awesome. I mean, it's a little cheesy, lots of swearing, a little bit of, of you know, violence and, and blood, but. It's pretty cool. <clears throat> but the original Child's Play was so awesome. And this, whoever came up with this idea of this killer doll that's possessed, um, you know, it was so awesome. And it was so creepy. And even a lot of the sequels, yes, they did become <clears throat> cheesier and cheesier as they went. But man, such a great character, this, this doll Chucky. Uh, I'm just scrolling through. Not a movie, but what about Tales from the Crypt? Yeah, Brian, we talked about Tales from the Crypt earlier. Um, the Crypt Keeper classic. He's not one of my top four, but he's definitely up there. We talked about Tales from the Crypt and Tales from the Dark Side. A lot of those short story movies were awesome. And Creep Show as well, uh, we had on our list. Um, you know, one of the, I, I can't remember which number it was, but when um, Andy, and of course, isn't it funny that the boy's name who had Chucky was Andy? Just saying, <laughs> um, when Andy went to like military school and he took Chucky with and all hell was raising the military academy, that was pretty crazy. 
Um, and then it just got weird, right? How Chucky got the girlfriend um, and kind of the two of them went off on their own and they had a kid. Like the movies just got, you know, absolutely insane. But they were so much fun. And they really built on this cool, cool character. Now I'm going to bounce over to this side. Michael Myers and Halloween. I was never a huge Michael Myers fan. But man, anyone who wears a jumpsuit and a mask and just has no emotion will walk up and kill you is crazy. <laughs> and he's awesome. And he's terrifying. He's absolutely terrifying. And really, you know, really captivates everything that is a slasher movie. Um, you know, I only saw one Halloween movie in the theater, and that was Halloween H2O. Uh, we went to the theater. Uh, it was, God, I was working at day camp, I think, back in the day. And a bunch of us went, and it was a joke. I think Halloween H2O, it seemed like it was 45 minutes. It was like the shortest movie ever. And my favorite part was they showed, like, he had, uh, <clears throat> I think he, like, killed somebody with a hockey skate in the face. And I was like, hey, a hockey skate, that's cool. And the rest of the movie was terrible. Um, you know, Jamie Lee Curtis, you know, good for her for always trying to have an appearance in the later Halloweens, but yeah, just, just didn't, didn't do it for me at all. Uh, I'm more scared to this day of Myers than any of them. Really Snoopy. Very interesting. Very interesting. Uh, you said sound down AU. Is that my sound or you're turning your sound down? <laughs> I hope it's not mine. I'll, I'll try and talk louder if it is. This uh, this laptop has a horrible, horrible microphone. Um, I'm going to bounce next to this guy, Jason Voorhees. Often pops into the chat from time to time. Uh, Jason was a cool character. And I'm actually going to do a little, little show and tell. Oh, man, too much stuff. Here we go. Friday the 13th special edition dvd box set they're all here how many is there god there's so many one two three four five six seven eight is there only eight or is that nine i don't know it's too dark in here but this was cool i loved it the first one of these i ever saw friday the 13th was jason takes manhattan not a good one to start at because it was a not a great movie but he's such a cool character um, I really liked the story the, because I went to camp, you know, overnight camp when I was a kid. And so the whole idea of the, you know, the lost camper that drowned coming back for revenge and then moving into the city. Creepy, right? Like just a crazy character and that mask, you know, makes it so easy for people to emanate and dress up on for Halloween, just a simple hockey mask. Um, you know, even when we watch Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and Casey Jones, you know, Casey Jones had the hockey mask. The first thing I thought of is, man, it's like a Jason ripoff. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, Jason's such such a cool character. Uh, Snoopy says, don't even like to see pictures of him. <laughs> oh, oh, sorry, Snoopy. Uh, Triple says, Chucky was more terrifying to me. The image of him slashing you from under the bed. Yes. Yes. Under the bed at the ankles. Oh. Snoopy says, in the beginning, I was afraid of Jason. Can watch movies now, no problem. Faves the original four, I believe. Yeah, I would, I would agree. I would agree. But my favorite of all time is this man right here. Freddy effing Krueger. Freddy was the best. He was absolutely the best. I got, I keep my little Freddy with me. There you go. Here's my little Freddy. Hey, guys. How's it going? Hey. <laughs> Robert England was such a cool, cool character. Um, Wes Craven, you know, did the Wes Craven's New Nightmare version of Freddy where they, they blurred real life into, into the Freddy world where the characters played themselves. That was really creepy. But I loved the character of Freddy Krueger. He scared the absolute crap out of me. And I think when I was little, um, the reason I started watching Freddy over all the others is it was from my friends. Um, <clears throat> I had friends that watched it. And again, I don't like jump scares and I, I'm like looking over my, sh my shoulder right now. I don't like jump scares. And his, my friend said to me, come watch Freddy. You always know when he's coming or he's going to strike because they always show a shadow or his glove 
or something to tell you he's there and the music changes. So even though there's that moment where he kind of pops out of nowhere, you always know he's going to be there. And so I did. I started watching Nightmare on Elm Street and I loved it. I loved it. It was so cool. I went, I got the, whoops, the Nightmare on Elm Street collection on DVD. So cool. Such a great set. And my favorite thing about Freddy uh, is he was just so creative, right? It's, it's not that he just went to kill people. He would make fun of them and torture them and, and tease them and kill them in such creative ways. Like you remember, I think it was at number three that was in the uh, insane asylum where, again, there was the, the guy that played with the puppets um, and he, you know, ripped out his um, ligaments and he was controlling them like a puppeteer and he walked him to the roof and then and he fell off. You know, there was the actress, the same movie that wanted to be on TV and was always a, a big star. And, you know, he became the TV and grabbed her and he had that classic line, welcome to prime time, bitch, and smashed her head into the TV. Um, you know, Robert England, the way he delivered those lines. Oh, remember in the earlier movies, uh, the girl in the bathtub and the claw just kind of kinds up, comes up through uh, between the legs in the bathtub. Um he was a true serial killer. He talked unlike any other ones, which made him different. A hundred percent. He had some of the best lines in the way Robert England delivered them. Robert England, who I've seen lots of things with him. He is absolutely comes across as the nicest guy in the world, but he always keep, just creeps me out for sure. Um, I'm just going to look up real quick. See if this load fast. Um, the Freddy Krueger Dream Warriors, uh, Freddy Krueger, Nightmare on Elm Street, I think it was five, Dream Warriors, was one of the coolest episodes, coolest movies um, where they, they had to team up against him. But here are some of some of his, uh, you know, top 10 liners from Freddy Krueger. Um, you know, I'm your boyfriend now, Nancy, or you're all my children now. Uh How's this for a wet dream? When he pulled the guy into the waterbed. Um, hey, Max, how's it going? I'm going to pretend you're not here. <laughs> Welcome. Uh, when he was uh, the girl who was the big martial arts uh, girl, he was like, Kung Fu this, bitch. <laughs> it was awesome. Um, he had the one where he was pretending to play the power glove with the guy. He's like, now I'm playing with power. So many good, good one-liners and catchphrases. Of course, there was the song we we heard um, off the beginning, the one, two, Freddy's coming for you. Uh, if if you weren't here for that, definitely kind of just go to the beginning of the stream. You'll hear the creepy song. So, so awesome. Uh, Sam, I'm taking my dream's best interest and in not really watching. <laughs> All right. Sounds good. <laughs> sounds good. Um, so, yeah, Freddy, Freddy is is my guy. And what this really set up, if you guys remember back in the day with Nightmare on Elm Street, and oh, yeah, let's not forget, because you guys remember who starred in the very first Nightmare on Elm Street, and I believe it was his on screen debut. Here's a little trivia Which famous actor first starred in Nightmare on Elm Street making his on screen debut? Let's see if anybody can guess. A very, very famous. Very famous. Let's see. Anybody? Anybody? MJ, I know I can't sleep. There you go. Carla for the win. Johnny Depp. Johnny Depp gets his on-screen debut in Nightmare on Elm Street, which is which is pretty wild, right? It's pretty cool when you think <laughs> Johnny Depp <laughs> starred in Nightmare on Elm Street. Um, so I know they did a, a remake of Nightmare on Elm Street. It was not very good. I watched it and it, I did not enjoy the remake at all. The originals are where it's at. Um, there are rumors. I mean, there's always been rumors, but there's rumors that I think Netflix is going to do. I don't know if it was a movie or a series um, on Freddy in that Robert England was going to don the outfit once again. I hope to God that's true because he is and always will be the best Freddy. And if Robert England can't play him, 
heck, let's like digitize them the, the way they did with some of the characters in Star Wars because Robert England is just a masterpiece. Uh, and so when we talk about Freddy Krueger and Jason Voorhees, you know, these characters and what they went through really set up one of the biggest rivalries in a horror movie history. Yeah, you had Dracula and the Wolfman and Frankenstein, and they all got together and did a bunch of collaborations. But these two guys, who were by far the biggest stars of the 80s and really 90s, um, pulled off their own collaboration. And that was Freddy vs. Jason. I got the, the DVD right here, Freddy vs. Jason. Um, I don't know if you guys have watched it or seen it. Um, the merchandise they did for this was insane. I got my big McFarlane box set, Freddy vs. Jason. Very cool. Um, I was obsessed. I love Freddy. I, I bought everything. Uh, I think I showed in, in one of the, I think the first ever episode of uh, Let's Go Retro, I showed you guys, I have on my wall back over here, um, this Freddy glove that's holding a Jason mask in a box art thing. It's amazing. <clears throat> so they made this movie, Freddy vs. Jason. And I was so stoked. I'm like, oh man, this is going to be the biggest pair off, the biggest duel, the biggest rival movie of all time. And it was a bust. I was so disappointed. Um, I mean, listen, I, I when you're making a movie of this caliber, how do you determine who's the better villain who's the better horror movie star right because the outcome of this movie if they're going to have freddie win then freddie's going to be you know everyone's going to be like freddie's the dominant character if they're going to have jason win oh jason destroyed freddie blah 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 and freddie was only in the dream world right we know freddie could be pulled out of the dream world but he really lived in the dream world so how do you make a movie where you take two of the biggest stars in their time period in their genre and have them face off to come up with a winner. Well, I think they really struggled with it. And they really struggled with how to bring them together. Because you had, you know, Freddy in Jason's mind and the kind of the dream world and trying to get pulled out into reality. And it was just, it was just so weird. I mean, the battle at the end, it was crazy. It was very, very cool. Um, and how it left off, you know, I'm going to spoil it because... Man, spoilers are out. When was this movie made? Let's see if I can even read the date here. Where's the date? Ah, it's too bloody small. Man, my eyes are getting really bad. Well, whatever it was, it was a long time ago. So I'm going to spoil it. The end of the movie, they're battling into the water, right? And Freddy's hacking up Jason. And he's getting him with the claws and doing all that stuff. And they go into the water. And of course... Everyone thinks, hey, Freddy won, Freddy won. And then out of the water comes Freddy and he's holding, or comes Jason and he's holding Freddy's head like he just cut off Freddy's head. And what happens right then? Freddy's eyes open <sighs> and the movie ends. So really there was no winner. Yeah, he had his head cut off, but he was still there. And there was rumor for a sequel and they were going to drag it on and it never happened. And at this point, I don't think it ever will. But it was so disappointing. And I don't know about you guys, but definitely back in the day, we loved hanging out with friends and being like, oh, who would win between Superman and Batman? You know, could Wolverine beat Magneto? Or, you know, who would win, Jason or Freddy? Would Chucky have a chance? Um, would Michael Myers and Freddy be a good pair because they're so similar? You know, you loved having those conversations. And this movie, Freddy vs. Jason, was such an opportunity to bring all of that to an end, to have a definitive winner. Here is the greatest character of all time. And maybe my expectations were just too high, uh, and I was so let down. MJ, I feel like I've seen that. Sounds familiar. Yeah, and Tiffany, I get you, Sam. I loved The Godfather 1 and 2. Saw Godfather 3 and hated it. All of it is so bad. Such a bloat of fans. Yeah. 
<clears throat> it happens today for sure, right? You never know what you're going to get with the sequels. They try and do too much. And often there's so much political mumbo jumbo that goes on behind it. You know, they don't want to kill off this character, that character. They don't want this character to be weak or that character to be weak because then it hurts their franchises. It's kind of like wrestling, right? Uh, that's for another stream. So I was disappointed, but uh, still love, love, love uh, Freddy and both those characters. You know, <clears throat> after the 80s and into the 90s, I never thought we would see a character like we did with with the big guys, right? You know, with with Michael and Jason, and Freddy and Chucky, how is there going to be another character that can really come up and play with those big boys? And it happened. Right? We saw the introduction of Ghostface with Scream. Um <clears throat> and this new kind of thriller, you know, I know what you did last summer. I'm going to start kind of over here with I know what you did last summer. And this is one you know, big, big cast, a lot of big names, um, and <clears throat> didn't know what to make of it. So we went to the theater and, you know, wasn't married at the time. We were just uh, crazy kids falling in love. And uh, we went to the movie theater and D, if she's watching, I don't know if she is or not. She sat there and she actually chewed a hole through her sweatshirt during I Know What You Did Last Summer because there were some scenes that were so intense and she didn't want to show that she was afraid. So even though we may have been a little snuggly wuggly in the movies, you know, she chewed, literally bit a hole in the sleeve of her sweater, which was awesome. <clears throat> I loved Scream 2, Tiffany. And actually, I just started rewatching them because they've been on uh, on TV. Um, and the new trailer for the new Scream, and they're not calling it Scream 5. They're calling it Scream 2022 is freaking creepy. Um, it looks awesome. It looks really, really cool. Actually, maybe what I could do, I didn't put it in my uh, in my slides, but maybe, maybe this will work. Maybe I can sh show the trailer right here, right now. Let's see if this will work. You guys want to see the new screen trailer? Okay, give me a moment. Give me a moment. What I'm going to do. We're going to do this on the fly. How can I do this? All right. I'm going to, I'm going to look it up. Okay. We're going to watch this together because this is really cool. So bear with me while I add this in. Because Scream, Scream really did some cool things for me. Um, I really enjoyed how it brought a new character into the new age of, of horror movies. Um, so what I'm going to do, oh shoot, uh, can I just do it right here? Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and do it right here, so bear with me. Got to add a browser source. Actually, no, we want to add... Whoops. I'm just changing. No, okay, we're gonna do. We're gonna have to do it here. I don't want to do it as a new scene because it's gonna change. So bear with me. We got to do a little audio output capture. We got to add in the trailer. If I can find it, you guys are sitting there going, "Wow, yes, yeah, Sam." This is like terrifying. You're you're scaring us. <laughs> All right, so we are going to watch. We're going to watch the new screen. Would you like to play a game, Tara? <laughs> doors unlocked. All doors locked. Doors unlocked.
Hello? It's happening. Three attacks so far. Do you have a gun? I'm Sydney Prescott. Of course I have a gun. Something about this one just feels different. Samantha? I'm... I know who you are. I've been through this. A lot. This is your life now, which means that whoever this is is going to keep coming for you. You ready? For this? Never. Oh, stop! Wait, wait, wait! There are certain rules to surviving. The attacks were all on people related to the original killers. Whatever his link is to our past, it's pulled us all back here. And I won't sleep until he's in the ground. That's pretty insane, eh? That is pretty, pretty insane. Um, it's going to be awesome. I, I'm going to be honest. I haven't seen a scary movie in a theater in a long time. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to be able to see that in theater. Uh, I'm, I may have to just watch it when it comes out because the first ones were scary but not that kind of scary. Like there's a whole lot of jump scares in there, um, but it, it looks pretty damn good. And so the way they phrased it, they didn't want to call it Scream 5 because, you know, putting in a, calling it Scream 5, everyone just thinks sequels are going to be bad and it's a continuation of the story. They're calling it Scream 2022 because it really is a new beginning. It's not a remake. It's not a rebirth. It's a... Reima not even a reimagining. It's a, it's a new story with a new cast of characters. And I think what they're hoping um, by having the original cast, you know, in this, they can re-kick it off and re-hand it over to a new group to take this franchise and beyond. And it looks amazing. <clears throat> so I will definitely see it at some point. I just don't know where. Um, also, WTF when you answer the door is very, very true. Um, hey, Max. All right, Max. Thank you very much. See you later. I hope you sleep well tonight. <laughs> um, yeah, that's just it, right? Like in today's day and age, everybody has ring cam. Well, not everybody, but a lot of people have doorbell cameras or surveillance cameras. You know, having the, the smartphone to lock and unlock your doors, that was pretty creepy. Hey, Christina G, welcome in. So I think they did a really good job. Really enjoyed Scream. Actually, all of them. Um, really enjoyed how they kind of continued the storyline up. Uh, really enjoyed the Ghostface character. And my son went for Ghostface as, as Halloween. <clears throat> so really, really cool. They did a really good job. So that really covers the, a lot in the horror movie category. And I hope you guys enjoyed kind of going down through memory lane. I did, Christina G. I, I did. Uh, it was a lot of fun. Um, so I hope you guys liked going through this. Um, the modernization, yeah, in that trailer was very cool. Um, you can tell they clearly put a lot of thought into that trailer in making it a movie for a new generation, not just rushing it out to get something out, you know? Um, <clears throat> But I've really enjoyed this. Uh, this was really hard to, to set up and, and go down. Oh, AAU. Yes, that is one I didn't talk about. Resident Evil. Absolutely. I was just I was just going to mention if there's if there's any other movies that we didn't talk about, definitely call them out in the chat. And Resident Evil is a good one. Um, I actually quite enjoyed the Resident Evil movies. Uh, the first one was cool. They got a little bit cheesy, um, but they were fun. You know, again, fun kind of action, action horror. Not overly scary. Uh, really, really cool. Uh, the stream concept is always fun. Thank you, Triple. Really appreciate it. Appreciate your support. Um, up next for us, just to let you guys know, next Tuesday, 
Um, we're not going to be doing a stream. We're going to be taking next Tuesday off. Um, but then we will be back the following Tuesday with kind of our uh, Thanksgiving special, a little retro uh, Thanksgiving to, to sit down and have some fun. Because I understand it's the U.S. Thanksgiving. Um, we will be back Saturday night for the Toronto Maple Leafs versus the Buffalo Sabres. And the way if they play in that game, how they played last night, it will definitely be uh, in the horror variety because they played terrible. Um, so definitely a hockey game upcoming. Again, next Tuesday, we will not uh, be doing a retro stream, but we will return the following Tuesday. So as always, thank you guys so much for your support. Um, Please, if you're watching this on replay or you're watching Ninja, if you haven't hit the like button or you haven't subscribed, please do so. Help us continue to grow. Um, I look forward to continuing to bring these uh, to you all the time. Hey, Anthony, good evening. Welcome in. Uh, we're just kind of winding winding down. Uh, so yeah, uh, if, if you're watching Ninja or watching the replay, hit the, hit the like, hit the subscribe. And we'll definitely continue doing a lot of these retro streams. Um, some upcoming things, you know, we have the hockey games. We're going to go more into uh, some video games. We talked about consoles. We're going to get into the games. Uh, we have some more movie topics to do. We talked a little bit about rock. We want to get into pop and do more music. Uh, we want to get in more into, you know, retro technologies uh, and some sports. We haven't done sports yet. So, oh, and a request to kind of do retro foods and talk about retro cereals and, and fun foods we used to eat. So thank you all so much. Appreciate it as always for, for hanging out for an hour or so. Uh, have a mighty fine rest of your week. We'll see you around on a bunch of other streams. And from Sam, Freddy Krueger, and the rest of the horror crew, have a great night and we'll see you real soon. Bye-bye. Just kidding. <laughs> Bye.